everyone. Welcome to another episode of Red Light Rants, presented by the Red Light Sports Network. I am Troy Otradovic, joined by the ever-wonderful Evan Watallison out in the great state of Wisconsin. So, Evan, it is March Madness, and there are a ton of things going on. A lot of games. Round two is now complete. Round three games are starting today. So before we get into the rant today, which should be a very good one, as, as we talk about some things that are perception amongst people, but why don't you go ahead and give the listeners an update on some of the round two scores from last evening if people decided that they wanted to go to bed. Well, we had another 4-5 upset yesterday as SF Austin uh, ended up beating uh, VCU 77-75 in overtime. Um, SF Austin won in the locker room with a 36-30 lead. VCU tied it up, uh, winning the second half 37-31, sending it to overtime. And the SF Austin ended up getting that win. And that's a game that I said yesterday when we were wrapping up, you know, when we were talking at the early tournament, when we were wrapping it up, I had mentioned that I wouldn't be surprised if SF Austin were to pull it out. The Shockers yeah. uh, did not shock as they blew out Cal Poly 64 to 37. And uh, that game was pretty much over at halftime as the uh, Shockers went into a halftime lead at 32 to 13. They just completely blew uh, Cal Poly out and showing what Cal Poly, although they, they won the Big West tournament, conference tournament they should not have been in the NCAA tournament and that's going to be another discussion we maybe we can even have today if there's time that you know just because you uh you win your conference tournament doesn't mean you should be an automatic qualifier for the NCAA tournament as Cal Poly showed Virginia won 70 to 59 and they were actually trailing at halftime 35 to 30 they had to have a uh, second half uh, run to end up pulling that game away and you know Costa Carolina would have pulled that off that would have been the first time ever a 16 seed upset a one Kentucky got the win as I expected 56 to 49 and they'll play the Shockers which I have Kentucky pulling off the upset over Wichita State UCLA beat Tulsa 76 to 59 it was a three, five point game at halftime and then UCLA just pulled away Iowa State beat North Carolina Central 93 to 75, and North Carolina got by this Providence by the skin of their teeth, winning 79 to 77. And I watched quite a bit of this game, and this game went uh, quite back and forth for a while. North Carolina would go on a run, Providence would get a close, North Carolina would go on another run, but uh, you know North Carolina moves on as does Memphis. They beat George Washington 71 to 66. And I think those were the only games we didn't cover uh, during the show yesterday. Kansas ended up getting the win, 80 to 79, and uh, Wiggins had 14 or uh, 19 points, and Gonzaga knocked off Oklahoma State, 85 to 77. So that uh, screwed up my bracket there because I had Oklahoma State getting the win, and I believe in the bracket I submitted to. Uh, to our bracket site, I think I believe I had Oklahoma State beating Arizona in the second round. So that kind of throws a wrench into my bracket. Yeah, I think it threw a wrench into a lot of people's bracket round two. And again, like you said, another 12-5 upset. I was watching. I was flipping back and forth last night in SF Austin. I honestly, in my brackets, I didn't pick them. I didn't pick that as the 5-12. VCU is a proven team, a team that's been in the tournament, very well coached. I did not think that upset was going to happen. Well, congrats to, to SF Austin. That's three number 12s, are Evan, that won in round two. That is unbelievable. It should have been all four. It should have been all four because NC State had a 16-point lead. That is just unbelievable that that happened. And I was watching the Providence-North Carolina game and Providence had every opportunity to seize control of that game, and they just didn't. Yes, they we did. could have seen six. We could have seen a six eleven upset right there. There were some good games in round two, and I expect round three to be just as good as we look at the matchups. And you know, right now my brackets are so screwed up that I'm just cheering for the upsets, of course, except when Wisconsin plays, because I got to cheer for our boys in red. 
But other than that, it's, you know, the tournament kicks off again today, round three, and we'll definitely recap all of those on Monday for you on the Red Light Sports Ramble. But, Evan, as we look at the tournament going on, and I'm going to bring this into perspective and kind of lead into what our rant is about today. You see these players and the Cinderella teams and the players that make the game-winning shot, and everybody then is looking at them and they're, they're all in awe of what is going on. But really what happens is people sometimes now get perceived at a different level and their actions, whether or not they want to believe it, can be instant role models for people, even though I don't like that term. Because when you look at it, people need to make choices. But when you're looking at celebrities and athletes, they are almost thrust into this role without even being thrust into the role. But their actions, what they say, what they tweet, does affect other people in sense, making them a role model. So I know that's what we want to rant about today. What are your thoughts? Take it away, bud. Um, you know, a coworker and I, we were talking on Mon- uh, Monday or Tuesday. It was Monday. And we were talking on Monday, him and I, and, you know, I work with, you know, kids that have been adjudicated. Uh, adjudicated meaning that they are, you know, they did, they committed a crime and the court, you know, adjudicated them, meaning that, you know, they're in the juvenile court system, either detention, correction, on supervision, whatever. And, you know, we were talking, and I see every day, with you know, you know, listening to the way they talk, you know, listening to what they listen to, um, listening to who and what they talk about, I see every day the impact that rappers and basketball players and you know to some extent football players have on the on young people today. They have a tremendous impact on young people today. And when they're talking about getting easy money, uh, getting easy, you know, easy women, you know, doing all this stuff, they're sending a message to these young people that, wow, this is such a great lifestyle. You know, they don't talk anymore about what they went through to get to the point where they're at today. And, you know, we look at a society of people today where, and I'm going to put a blunt, as a society, we're lazy today. You know, the, the society today, it's not like uh, from when you were growing up, Troy, or when, you're, uh, when your dad was growing up, or my parents were growing up, the, you know, the hardest working generation, you know, in regards to, to our parents. It's not like that today. People, you know, are, don't value what hard work gets you anymore, and they want the easy, the easy answer. And you, when you see these uh, these professional athletes and these rappers and these singers promoting how easy it is to make a few dollars, and then you see the uh, the receipt paper that same day published an article that they made a uh, a drug bust on the interstate. They pulled somebody over and found nineteen thousand dollars worth of worth of marijuana in the bus, and they also said exactly how much. Of nineteen thousand dollars was, you know, I was like, um, I'm thinking to myself, aren't you kind of promoting to young people how much money they can make if they're selling dope rather than working hard? Because they're not seeing the, you know, the police arrest of the guy. They're seeing the nineteen thousand dollars. That's what these kids are seeing when they see those headlines. They see nineteen thousand dollars and pot. And by, you know, athletes talking about how easy it is, is to make money, especially not athletes, I mean, rappers talking about how easy it is to, how easy it is to make money, especially in, you know, doing drugs and all that. And then you see those headlines in the paper. It makes it very hard for, for you know, people like myself and my colleagues to do our jobs when all these kids today are seeing is easy money thrown in their face. And I think it's time for celebrities, and I think it's time for, you know, like especially athletes and rappers, I think it's time for them to take responsibility for what they're saying and their actions and understand the impact that it's having on young people. 
you know, we don't have a society today where, you know, like we have both parents at the home. The majority of my students are either just living with mom, living with grandma, living adopted, living in a foster home. You know, they don't have the traditional family values in these homes. And majority of single parents I know do an absolutely wonderful job raising, you know, their kids in a single parent home. But you have those homes that they're not getting those family values and not getting, you know, learning, you know, personality traits and different values from the parents, they're going different avenues to learn these values. And unfortunately, it's in today's music that they're learning them. So really, the rant I'm trying to get across today is the athletes, celebrities, rappers, actors, actresses, they have to take more of a leading role and responsibility in understanding that their actions, their words, are having an impact on today's young people. Well, the one thing I'll I'll say to this, Evan, and I'll I'll be kind of the devil's advocate at first, being an athlete in college and being part of, you know, a society where you do have little kids, even though it was college, Division Three soccer, that would see you and they would think that you are a professional at that point. We also talked to the coach of the, the River Monsters, how those kids look at those indoor football players as, you know, the superstars that, that are out there, the Aaron Rodgers and the different players. They look up to them even though they're athletes. And I, I, I'm going to take it a step down. You're saying celebrities, athletes. I'm saying anybody that deals with younger children has to be careful of what they're doing because of exactly what you said. I'm a little bit older. I grew up with a mom and dad in my house, and I know that that is not the norm anymore. And I know a number of single parents, like you said, that do an amazing job. They work hard, instill great family value. But then when we flip the page over, You listen to the rap music, and, you know, sometimes not even rap music. It's any genre of music. The lyrics in the words do influence kids because they don't have anybody else to look up to. They don't have that so-called role model in their life, so they latch on to an athlete. They latch on to an actor or an actress. Now, is it fair to that person? No, it's not. I, I don't agree that all of a sudden they should have this undying burden on their shoulder that they're affecting all these children. But that's reality. As you become, and I'm not even, again, not even saying a superstar. I'm saying anybody that goes out, and and that's why I use the, the, the Continental Indoor Football League. Those players on that field are normal people, Evan, like you and I. But when they play ball on the weekend, and those kids are in the stands, That's they're looking up to them. And so my point is, it is a role that is put on them not by their choice. But they have to realize what they're doing because they affect so many people. Does that make sense? Yeah. Well, it doesn't make so, sense. I caught me in the a yawn there doing the early morning show. If I'm putting my co-host to sleep, I must be putting everybody else to sleep. <laughs> no, I'm not saying you're putting me to sleep. I just had to do a quick yawn. Well, that's good. Because as I finish my point up on that, the simple point is people in those roles that are the major superstars have to realize the amount of people that they are affecting. Everybody wants to say, well, it's the parents, the parents, the parents. And you know what? Like I said, the majority of parents do a good job, but even sometimes the parents are going to get lost in this world that we live in when life is tough. What else is there to do but listen to what they're saying? And so when I look at this, there are so many things that, that we have to look at from a standpoint of, 
who are we influencing? Because, you know, let's look at the children that you deal with. The, the family life they come from, it is not a perfect family. And so if mom or dad is having a hard life, and they see, like you were talking about, the drug bust, and the way that marijuana is talked about so loosely in life now, what is to say if they don't have that opportunity, they don't take to try and make their family better because of what you said about the society right now looking for the easy money? I totally agree with you. I see it in my workplace. I see, see it with some of the students that go to the school that I'm the director of. They want the easy way out, and the hard work is not there anymore. And so how do we get that back? I don't know. Is it because celebrities and, and actresses and, and actors do these things? I'm not so sure. I think our society has got to a point now where I don't know if we can change it back. What do you think about that? I wouldn't say I don't know if we could change it back. I think it is change. You know, I think it can be changed back, but it's going to have to start with you know the, the 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 soldiers with the boots on the ground. I'll, I'll use that analogy. So, like your parents, your teachers, your you know your clergymen, your whoever basically is interacting with young people. It's gonna have to start with them, and it's gonna have to you know the the people that have the podium, they're gonna have to you know promote the the people with the boots on the ground. That's you know like the the celebrities who are being looked up to, they're going to have to turn it around and speak. You know, Charles Barkley back a long time ago when he was playing, you know, he had said, I'm not a role model. He said, you need to look at your parents if you're looking for a role model. I play basketball. You know, Barkley is trying, you know, he was speaking up, deflecting that attention off of him, although it was still on him. He was trying to deflect that attention off of him to put it on who it should be on. So we need, you know, the celebrities and, you know, like all of them to start saying is the kids, the young people today need to look at who the true role models in society are. And those are the people that are working with the young people every day, the teachers, the, the parents, the clergymen, the, you know, you name it. You know, like I said, the people with the, the boots on the ground, they have to start getting more support from the people at the top, the, you know, and, and the kids' eyes, the people that have the platform. And if they can start getting support, more support that they used to get back in, it would be the early 90s, with people like Charles Barkley, who was promoting, uh, looking up to parents and many other athletes and celebrities, then we could start swinging it back the other direction. Well, I would, I would agree with you there. You know, the, the one thing we look at is, and I guess, you know, I can consider us in the media. And people in the media, you know, you, you talk about the report, of, and I'll go back to your, your story about the marijuana bus and, and this. If you turn the local news on, Evan, how many good things do you hear on the top of the hour? If you turn the 6 o'clock news on, that's the time the news comes on here. If you turn the 6 o'clock news on, is there anything good at 6 o'clock? No, it's all about no. the bad things happening in the world. And maybe around 10 after, they do a local spotlight on something good. But really, when I looked at the news today, and even, I think, growing up, I, I really don't know. I didn't watch the news growing up that much until I got older. But when you turn on a news network, all you're hearing about are all the bad things going on in the world. And so maybe we can make a change there, too, and having and showing these athletes that are doing good things because I don't think enough of that gets reported. So when somebody does something good, why not make that the spotlight? You know, I know a number of athletes do enough bad things, and that's all that gets in the news. When they do something good, when they do all the charity work, those things are not being promoted. And I think we need to promote those things more. What do you think about that? Yeah, I definitely think we need to. I think we need to talk a lot more about, you know, Aaron Rodgers and his work with the Mac Fund, for instance. I think that needs to be talked about more than, you know, uh, what's his name, the owner of the, the coach, Jim Ursay, being stopped and arrested for drunk driving and um, having uh, pills on him. Yes, it needs to be reported, but rather focus on that. Let's focus on Aaron Rodgers and his work with the Mac Foundation. 
that's what should be focused on more. And, you know, I go back to Randy Moss when he was with the Vikings. You know, like there's a media firestorm around him about how bad of a person he was. Uh, Randy Moss, he's just bad. He's just a bad A. He's, you know, whatever adjectives and whatever, you know, they could come up with, they were talking with Randy Moss. What people didn't realize about Randy Ma is that he did a lot of work for the community in Minneapolis when he's with the Vikings. He gave back a lot to the uh, to the community, and he did a lot of charity work. He did a lot of uh, good things, and those are things. And granted, he didn't want it promoted, but those are things that were never talked about about Randy Ma. Is all the bad things the the running over the traffic cop. And, you know, they use the term running over when he just nudged her with the car trying to get the car out of the way of traffic. But they report it as if he ran the woman over. Um, the mooning of the crowd at Lambeau Field, which it, it pissed me off when he did it. But now after the fact, it's, you know, and there was, wasn't the, a big deal as people made it out to be. Packer fans are mooning the, uh, the Vikings bus all the time. Why is it? all of a sudden not okay for him to not actually do it, but to imitate it. Why is that so bad? And, you know, like those are the things that people talked about for Randy Moss, but they never talked about the good that he did. And Chad Johnson, he is probably the most, one of the most accessible athletes on Twitter or Chad Ochocinco, whatever he's calling himself these days. He often has tweet ups with fans. He plays Xbox with the fans he talks to the fans he you know he's really good with the fans but that's not what they talk about they talk about you know chad johnson changing his name to chad ocho cinco and all the celebration antics that he did they don't talk about the the good stuff and i think it does start with the media and the people in the media reporting these good things reporting when you know, Aaron Rodgers helps out another kid doing the Mac fun. So the only time you ever see that talked about is the is Aaron commercials. Um, have the media talk about the work that Randy Moss has done for the for the kids in Minneapolis. Have the media talk about the, um, you know, whatever the good stuff is. And if they were to bang on that drum a little more, maybe it'll you know change the thinking of the athletes that aren't doing the right thing. Maybe they'll see, you know, the, the good things that are going on, and maybe they'll feel that I need to be more like that person. Well, I totally agree. Maybe we should take that concept with our with our show and our network, is to start promoting more good things that we find from athletes. I mean, maybe we should take the stand, Evan, and maybe we should start doing it. Because you're absolutely right, and I'll go back to one thing you said about the Ursay thing. I mean, that's out there, and okay, but what has he done well? You know, if he's donated X amount of dollars to a, to a charity, you know, people do make mistakes. I've made mistakes. You know, I, if people dig up my past, there are plenty of things that I've done. But I think I've done more good than wrong, and I think in general I'm trying to make people around me better. So maybe we need to think about that, Evan. Maybe we need to add a segment on our show when we see these good things and get the word out because you're absolutely right. All of the, the good that these people do just kind of gets shoved under the mat. And, you know, a lot of them say, well, I don't need to promote it, I don't need to promote it. You know what? I think you do because the minute you do something wrong, the media is going to be on you. And so – they're not going to take those 10 good things you did because the one time you screw up, it's going to be on Twitter, on Facebook, on headline news, on Sports Center, on all of these things of all the bad things that you've ever done. So maybe the good stuff does need to be promoted. And maybe if that's promoted, maybe that's how the change comes about, Evan, when these kids that you're working with aren't only seeing the bad things that are coming out. When they're seeing that, hey, being an athlete, is about hard work and respect and doing charitable things, maybe that's how the change comes about. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, I think it makes sense. Because, like uh, you're saying, we, have, we talk we, Oh, go ahead. I was, I was, you can finish what you said. I was just saying it makes sense. I was just going to tell you, we have about 430 left in the show, so that's all I was going to say. 
<laughs> well, my, my last point on that is you talk about the role, the, the, the role models, the athletes and so on and so forth, doing all of these things and, and all the bad things and, and whatever, but maybe it's because it's not promoted the right way because the young people are not seeing all the good that they do. And if they start seeing the good, then you can point to, especially in your role, hey, look what Aaron Rodgers does. Look at all the good he does for people. You know, and you can point to those things. And when it's covered and in the media that way, then those are things that really might make a difference for these young kids. But that's all I have left on that, bud. Yeah, well, you know, I, I, you know, I'm glad we got to talk about this. It's just something that's been on the, you know, on the back of my mind all week, thinking about it. And it's just, you know, we as a society need to stop focusing on the bad, and that's what's in there. And we also have to start, t- you know, promoting the good. And we need the athletes to help out the people that are molding the young people of today, the parents, the teachers, the clergymen, the coaches, and all of them. We need the athletes to help by saying these should be the guys you're looking at and you're looking up to. These are the guys you should be looking up to and listening to. I wouldn't be where I'm at today if it wasn't for whoever and whoever. You know, kids want mentors. Kids want, you know, need mentors today. And, you know, why not promote, you know, mentors to be (coughs) – Apologize, you know, mentors to be good coaches and all that. So, you know, with that said, we do have on Tuesday a special guest coming on to talk um, Green Bay Packers and what they should be doing in the NFL draft. So, and then uh, next week, Saturday, I'm already putting the topic out there right now, is should conference should conferences have automatic qualifiers into the NCAA tournament because – you know, with after Cal Poly, what happened to them yesterday, you know, they should not even been in the tournament to begin with, even if they won their conference tournament. So I'm putting that on the plate right now, Troy. I hope you're okay with that. But should conferences get automatic qualifiers? Do you have anything final? Hey, I'm o- yeah, I'm okay with that. That could have been not, that could have been our topic today. Because I, I, I'm not, I'm not going to give my stand on it right now for the listeners, but it'll give them one week to think about it. And so, again, I'm going to repeat what Evan said. Next Saturday, our rant will be about automatic qualifiers to the NCAA tournament. Should it happen or should it not happen? I'm not going to give you where I stand on that today, Evan. I think you know where I stand on that. But the other thing is we do have a great guest on Tuesday, so make sure you tune in live on Tuesday to be able to listen to that. But with that said, Bud, there's not much else coming from my side. I do have to buzz off and get back to work. So, With that said, everyone, I hope you enjoyed the Red Light Rant today presented by the Red Light Sports Network. Evan and I will get back at you on Monday. Enjoy your weekend. We'll see you at the next Red Light.